In this video, I want to discuss uh, resolution and resizing as it relates to digital printing. Um, I want to start by thinking about where do pixels come from? We hear pixels, we know what a pixel looks like when we look at it on screen, if we're really zoomed in on an image in Photoshop, but where do pixels come from? Well, first of all, pixel is actually a shortened version of picture element. Uh, your camera sensor inside your camera is a grid of thousands of little tiny sensors. And if you look at this diagram, um, I'm going to point out maybe like one square and one square, which contains four different sensors. It contains a red sensor, a green sensor, a blue sensor, and then another green sensor. Um, each pixel of your image is made up of the information from a red, a blue, and two different green sensors. Why two different green sensors? Well, three different square sensors do not make a square. So I guess they decide at some point that add an extra green and take half the information from one, half the information from the other. The ending result is that once these little sensors record how much red light, green light, and blue light there is, you get brightness of those different values in each pixel. Now if we look at this zoomed in version of an image um, and all of these pixels, we have some solid colors in this area. Um, each one of these different pixels, whether it's a solid color, whether I should say they're all solid colors, but primary colors, secondary colors, or these in-between colors, each one of those pixels is made up of varying brightness of red, green, and blue. <clears throat> if we look at one particular pixel like this one here, this is a pure red pixel, so it's got full brightness in the red channel, zero brightness in the green and blue channels. So that would be 255 brightness in red, zero in green, zero in blue. If we look at a pure blue pixel right here, then it has zero brightness in red and green, and it has full brightness in blue, so 255. Um, if we look at a pixel that's not a pure color like this one, this has a mix of brightness from all three channels, and that's very typical. Most of our pixels are not absolutely pure red, green, or blue. So this pixel, in fact, has a brightness of 119 red, 155 blue and 153 in green. Uh, so that means it has a little bit more blue than green and less red. If you look at a monitor, and here's a really zoomed in picture of a monitor, your monitors uh, use the additive color system, which means that um, more color equals more brightness, which equals closer to white. So really every pixel of your screen is made up of three little LED lights, one red, one green, one blue. And the varying brightness of those three LEDs or little lights um, results in the color that you see. If you were to step way back and look at these letters, you would see that the R letter looked red from a distance. Um, here up close, we can see that really what it is is simply that all of the little red LED lights in that area are on at full brightness and the green and the blues are off. Now with the green, all the green ones are on and the blue and reds are off. And likewise with the blue, all the blue um, LEDs are on at full brightness and the red and greens are off. Now the number of pixels you have ends up making a difference in how well you can resolve detail. Resolve is where we get the word resolution. So um, if I have few pixels, then the edge of something like this kind of donut shape looks really jagged and pixely, as we would say. Um, we can't resolve the edge of that very well. If we have a lot more pixels, then it's easier to resolve the edge. It seems to have more resolution. Um, it looks smoother as a result of being made up of fewer or uh, more tiny little blocks of information. When we think about printing, um, the higher the resolution that we have results in the finer print that we get. Um, we typically will say, in our colloquial language, we'll often say DPI, but really it's PPI. Um, this says DPI, and that's really a mistake. What we're really talking about is pixels per inch, or PPI. So how many pixels do we have per inch of print space? Here are some numbers to consider. 10 PPI, even though it says DPI, 10 pixels per inch is extremely low, and you would see very obvious blocky pixels. 
Um, 72 pixels per inch is common screen resolution. And on a screen, most things look great at 72 pixels per inch, but they don't look so great when you print them. You'll tend to still see kind of jagged little stair-step pixel edges to things. Photographic resolution, if we're going to print something that looked like a photograph, we commonly think of 240 pixels per inch, 300 pixels per inch, or higher as being good resolution for photographic prints. Now eventually, these pixels, which have red, green, and blue information, RGB information, have to be translated in, from the additive color system into the subtractive color system, which uses cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to make up the colors. Um, and when we do that, then we're mixing together tiny little dots of those four or more colors of the subtractive system to make each pixel. Now I said four or more. It used to just be cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now with more advanced photographic printers, we have eight different colors, and really maybe nine, but I'll explain that in a second. We have not only cyan, but we have light cyan. We have not only magenta, but we have light magenta. We only have yellow. There's really not a point in having light yellow. It's already a fairly light color. And instead of just black, we often have three different levels of black, photo black, light black, and light light black. I mentioned a minute ago, some maybe we have nine colors because many printers also have a matte black cartridge that you would use on matte papers instead of photo black. Now, if you look really, really closely, if you magnify uh, a print made in a printer today, what you'll see is not a grid, although we think of our image as being a grid of pixels, but each one of those pixels is made up of lots of little dots of ink, and they are basically sprayed onto the paper in what is a random dot pattern, and that's referred to as stochastic, a stochastic pattern, as a random dot pattern, so that the eye does not pick up on the grid-like nature, so that the image doesn't look digital in the final printed result. Now, how large can you print? It really starts out with how many pixels do you have? Uh, maybe the native uh, sensor image out of your camera has a certain number of pixels, megapixels, thousands of pixels across and down. You may have cropped your image a little bit, so you may have a little less than your beginning native re resolution. But whatever that total number of pixels is, um, then you have to think about, well, how many pixels per inch do I hope to print at? And you're going to divide the first number by the second number. So if I have, let's say, an image that's 3,000 pixels across, and I also have one that's 4,000 pixels across, if I want to print those at 240 pixels per inch, then I have some simple math to do. 3,000 pixels divided by 240, and you can do this just right on your calculator on your phone, but if you divide 3,000 pixels by 240 pixels equals an inch, you end up with 12 and a half inches if you don't resample that image. Meanwhile, the larger image that has 4,500 pixels, if you divide that as well by 240 pixels per inch, you're gonna have a bigger image. You've got more pixels, the same number of pixels equaling an inch, you now have more inches. So now we have 18 and three quarters inches across without resampling that image. How large can I print? What if you wanted to print larger? What do you do? Well, you've got two options. You can either print at a lower pixels per inch, say 200. So if I don't count quite as many pixels equaling an inch, I will have more inches as a result. So that same 4,500 pixel across image, if we divide that by only 200 as opposed to 240, we get more inches without having to resample. Um, or another option is we resize the image by resampling and basically create more pixels so that we can print larger. Let's talk about those two options and what are the upsides and downsides. If you print at a lower resolution, now the good thing is you're taking the same number of pixels and you're simply making them larger and therefore you have uh, a bigger image across your paper. There is a downside, which is that um, you're maybe going to start to see the pixels. Not like you would at a 72 pixel per inch image, but if you get really close, you might be able to see um, a little bit of pixelation. Um, likely not, I think 200 is relatively safe and generally a bigger print you don't stand quite so close to. Um, this is why I say at the bottom, uh, if the print is very large, it may not be viewed so close. Maybe, maybe it will be. Um, what about if you resize your image by resampling? Well, when you use Photoshop's image size function, 
um, and you choose to resample your image, you're going to make a larger image. But what happens really is that Photoshop is going to recalculate every one of your pixels to make new ones. In fact, it doesn't even just like keep some of those pixels and put new pixels in between. It's going to invent all new pixels uh, to create your larger image, and it's going to try to do its best to guess what those pixels should look like. But either way, your image is basically completely changed. Every pixel in your image has now been changed. And so you no longer really have your original information. And in some cases, you may be losing resolution on that information. Now, sometimes we do resample. And how can you do that? How much can you do that? Well, in general, images that are fairly high resolution, they resample pretty well. But images that are small, low resolution do not. Um, if you can't see the detail in a smaller image, blowing it up will not suddenly reveal detail that wasn't there to begin with. Um, really what it does is magnify uh, an unsharp or un, uh, an image with low resolution and it's just a bigger image with low resolution. So let's take this picture. Uh, I just grabbed this off the internet. Uh, apparently this young guy is a musical uh, artist of some renown. Uh, I'm probably sure the kids these days know who this guy is. I'm kidding, I know who he is. Um, so this is a fairly low res image. Just pulled it offline. Um, it's only a few hundred pixels across. Uh, what if I wanted to make this really big though? Okay, I'm a big fan. I wanna be have a big poster on my wall. I wanna print it larger, okay. So let's say I open up the image size function in Photoshop. And you would do this by going to the image menu and choosing image size. And I'm gonna say, okay, I want to resample this image. And instead of just three and a half inches across, I'm gonna make it much bigger. And here I've put in new numbers. Now I'm doing 10 inches across at 240 pixels per inch. This little preview, this is how the image looked originally when magnified a lot. And as soon as I type in those numbers, the preview shows me how that image will look once it has been resampled. Well, you can see that I don't get any more definition of say the stubble on the chin in the portrait. Um, it's just gonna be bigger. It's gonna be bigger, it's gonna look a little smoother, it's not really gonna look any sharper. No more details gonna be apparent. And once I complete the resizing, here is the image how it looks. Yes, it's gonna be much bigger, but I don't see any more detail. Now, on the other hand, let's go to this image. Oh, this is a fine young looking young man here. Um, maybe not so young. <laughs> anyway, um, this guy's also a musical artist, not so well known. Anyway, I want to take this image, which is 14 inches across, and upsize it. Now, it's got pretty good detail to begin with. It's a really sharp image. It's a high resolution uh, image straight out of the camera, pretty high resolution sensor. And I'm going to now take this and upsize it to 30 inches across and resample it. I'm keeping the resolution at 240, but I'm increasing the number of inches. So I'm gonna go up to 7,200 pixels across now. Um, and the preview shows me I've actually still got pretty good detail there. When I've completed the transformation, still looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any more detail than I had before, but I already had a lot of detail and that detail has been blown up. So what does this resampling really do? I'm gonna show you an extremely low resolution image here because it helps us to understand what really happens when we resample. Here is a picture that is five pixels across and two pixels tall, and it's simply a gradient from black to white. So we have black on the far left, then we have dark gray, then we have middle gray, then we have light gray, then we have white. Bottom row is the same thing. Um, what happens if I resample this image and make it seven pixels across? So I go in to image size, I type in seven pixels as my width. It's gonna actually increase it to three pixels tall. Um, and I'm gonna resample. And what I see, here's the old image, here is the new image. The new image is bigger, uh, it's more pixels across, and some of the pixels look kind of the same. The outer pixel still looks black, like that. The middle pixel still looks kind of medium gray, and the outer pixel on the right side still looks white. But then we get these other shades that are not quite what we had before. We never had this shade, which is really, really dark gray, almost black, but not quite. This pixel here is a little bit lighter than this pixel. Um, over here, we have a similar kind of thing where this pixel is just a little bit darker than that. 
and this pixel is a shade that we didn't have at all before, which is a very, very light uh, gray, almost white. What happens if we resize that original five pixel image to be six pixels across? Well, again, we still have a black on the outside and a white on the outside, but these three pixels in the middle of the original image now have to become four pixels. And this is darker than any pixel I had before. This one is um, a little darker, a little lighter than, than this, but a little darker than this one. This one likewise is a little bit lighter than this one and a little darker than this one. So you see that it has calculated all new pixels to create this gradient um, that has to now be six pixels wide. What if we do a nine pixel wide image? I won't repeat all of that stuff, but you can see all of these intermediate shades that Photoshop is having to create. And from a distance, it's probably gonna look pretty similar, but the point is that you are recalculating all of your pixels. What would happen if we actually sized that five pixel image down to three pixels wide? Well, basically it kind of got rid of pixel two and pixel four and just kept pixel one, three, and five. And so we have black, we have middle gray, we have white. Uh, just for fun, once I did this, I thought, well, what happens if I resample this three pixel wide image back up to five? Do I get the same thing that I had before? In fact, no. Here is when I take the three pixel image and I resample it back up to five image, five pixels. And yes, I have black on the outside. Yes, I have white on the outside. I've kind of got middle gray in the middle, but what the heck is this? This isn't like my original dark gray. This is a much, much darker gray. What about this? This isn't my original light gray. This is a much lighter gray. So the algorithm calculated these pixels differently than they had originally been before. What's the lesson out of that? Well, it does tell you that sizing down and sizing back up, it does, you don't get back to the same thing. You are degrading your image. You are replacing your original information. So resampling does destroy your image in small ways, little by little, as you go. This is why we try to avoid resampling if we don't have to. I would rather blow my image up without resampling if I have enough resolution. If I don't, then I'm going to have to resample and I try to do it as few times as possible to maintain the best looking image. That's the end of the slideshow. Thanks.